Let me ask you a simple question. Are you a total piece of shit? No, of course you're not, because you recycle. You put paper and cardboard in its own bin and cans and bottles in another. And of course, you definitely separate out all your plastics. Why? Because you told me to. Because your entire life, that's what you've been told to do. Kids are taught early that recycling is a good thing. And activists like young Greta want to shame you if you don't do it. But here's the thing, some recycling is good for the environment and waste reduction. But when it comes to plastic, recycling it is mostly a big fat scam. And like most scams, it's got everything to do with money. You know the saying from The Matrix where Morpheus asks Neo if he wants to know how deep the rabbit hole goes? Well, the history of plastic and recycling it is a very deep rabbit hole, but also a very disgusting one, filled with lies, deception, and greed. And the entire history of plastics starts in the early part of last century in the 1930s. During World War II, the Allies were looking for a lightweight, flexible, and cheap way of replacing much heavier steel and wood construction in planes, tanks, and other equipment. And they found a solution, plastic. During a few short wartime years, plastic production in the United States went into overdrive, quadrupling the amount that was being produced. But when the war ended, so did the increased demand for plastic. But instead of just shutting down all the new plastic factories created during the war, the Society of the Plastics Industry was created instead. And it had one simple aim, to make sure consumers who had never really bought plastic items before would buy as much of the stuff as possible. And it worked. America soon became obsessed with plastic but there was one really big problem for the plastic industry because people were just reusing the items instead of throwing them away. Until this time, people were very comfortable with reusing items. Milk, food items, cosmetics, and cleaning products all came in metal or glass containers that could be cleaned and used repeatedly. So when plastic first came into fashion, people just started reusing plastic containers. But this wasn't good for the plastic industry because this meant less money selling packaging. So to encourage people to use more plastic, the industry went into advertising advertising overdrive. They took out full page ads in magazines and newspapers, encouraging people not to use reusable items, telling us that single use disposable items were the way of the future. Selling society on the idea that life would be easier if you just threw your packaging away and didn't have to clean containers or return bottles to your milkman. With all this advertising, very soon the world got used to just throwing everything away. And by 1960, plastic production had surpassed aluminium for the first time in history. But this love of being wasteful didn't last very long because just a decade later, people stood up and said enough was enough. In April of 1970, the United States came together to celebrate the very first Earth Day. 20 million people in total, or 10% of the entire country's population, attended rallies all around the country. It was a mass demonstration designed to put pressure on the government to implement laws that would benefit the environment. And one of the major targets of these demonstrations was the plastic industry and its very wasteful practices. The plastic industry was in the crosshairs and people were angry, but they couldn't take a hit to their business just because all of a sudden people started caring about the environment. So they did what most big industries do when their profits come under fire. They used lies and manipulation. Even though only 10 years earlier, they had successfully convinced people to just throw everything away, they now needed to change their tactics. And instead of investing time and money into making their products less damaging, they just blamed us for the problem. The plastic industry put together a series of ads blaming consumers for single-use plastics, saying that they were the ones responsible for plastic pollution because it was us that was throwing these items away in the first place. For years, they spent millions of dollars on these new campaigns with the main aim of guilt-tripping the public into taking the fall. Instead of taking responsibility for their own actions and the practices that had led us to this problem in the first place. Yeah, this is pretty gross behavior. But if you think it couldn't get more scummy or deceptive than this, think again, because the worst is still to come. But before I talk about that, just a quick note that we have an epic newsletter of 65,000 people plus receiving extra financial education packaged in beautifully told stories. So there's a link in a bio for that. Okay, so now let's talk about possibly the worst thing that the plastic industry has done in the name of profit. But even though it was something that was created over 45 years ago, it's still tricking most of the world into believing that we are doing something good when recycling it. The world continued to put pressure on the plastic industry as more 
data showed how damaging these products were to the environment. So for the first time, the industry legitimately started to look into what they could do to solve the problem. In the 1980s, the plastic industry started putting heavy research and money into the effectiveness of recycling plastic in order to reduce waste. But unfortunately for them, what they found wasn't good news. According to the plastic industry's own reports, most plastic isn't able to be recycled effectively at all. This is mostly due to plastic's flexibility and the way it's produced, meaning the material starts to degrade after only a few uses. Meaning that each time a piece of plastic was recycled, its quality would quickly degrade. And there were other problems as well that got in the way of effectively recycling plastic. Like the fact that it was almost always cheaper and more energy efficient to make plastics from new instead of making them from old materials. But the public wouldn't accept that. They wanted cleaner, greener materials that weren't so damaging to the environment. People wanted to recycle plastic. And so the big brains in the plastic industry put their thinking caps on and came up with the most damaging scam ever that was designed to manipulate people into not feeling so bad about using their product so that they could keep selling their profitable plastic. Remember the society of plastics industry I spoke about earlier? Well, as soon as they realized that recycling plastic wasn't a viable option, they created a plan to trick people into believing that it is. And they did this by simply lying to people. Or as the president of the industry of plastics industry put it, If the public thinks the recycling is working, then they're not going to be as concerned about the environment. And here's how they pulled off that lie. This is the international recycling symbol created in 1970 by the artist Gary Anderson. And I'm sure you've seen this symbol printed on almost every single disposable plastic product you buy today. Actually, no, you won't. Instead, you'll find symbols like these, which look almost identical, but in reality, they aren't even close to being the same thing. These are resin identification codes, which were created by the plastic industry in 1988. The arrows on the resin identification codes don't actually mean anything at all. The only thing that does is the number in the middle, which tells you what kind of plastic the item was made from. However, the plastic industry added the arrow by design in order to mimic the recycling symbol so that most people would be fooled into believing that the plastic was recyclable and not to feel so bad about using these products and so that they could sell more plastic and make a ton more money. Still today, almost everywhere on earth, you will find these symbols on the bottom of almost every single plastic item you buy. And in most cases, they won't be recyclable. In reality, only the first two of the main seven plastic resin identification codes are generally recyclable. Some of the remaining five can be recycled in certain circumstances. But as a lot of places aren't set up to recycle these kind of specialized kinds of plastic, these items usually just end up in landfill or are just incinerated like any other kind of garbage. Have you also been fooled by these kind of resin codes? Let me know down below. For almost a century, the plastic industry has lied to us in order to make profit. And since the 1980s, they've convinced billions of people, including probably you and I, to believe that the single use plastics you use in every single day aren't as bad for the planet as they actually are. And sadly, these scummy practices don't seem like they're gonna seize anytime soon because unfortunately for us, the plastic and plastic recycling industry is a massive business today. Collectively, the 10 biggest recycling companies on the planet make over $60 billion per year. And a big chunk of that income comes from recycling plastic. It's companies like these that are likely contracted by your city or your government to recycle the plastic disposed of in your community. And if we all recycled less plastic, that would mean they'd make less money from lucrative government contracts that are paid for by your tax dollar. And so these companies spend millions per year brainwashing the public that all plastic recycling is good. So we don't feel so bad about using plastic products. On top of this, in the US alone, plastic companies spend over $300 million per year advertising their products, making sure we stay hooked on plastic. And companies like Apple, Patagonia, and Adidas invest in heavy PR campaigns, trying to make you see them as good guys because they use recycled plastic in their products. All so that humanity stays hooked on petrochemical products for as long as possible. And so that the companies profiting from this industry don't have to take massive steps to make significant change. In short, it's a lot of public relations and they're directing the narrative of society just enough to make it seem as if they care as long as it doesn't impact their profits. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't recycle your plastics because there are some plastics that can be recycled, but it's only a small amount of the plastics that will actually come back into circulation as new products. Luckily for us, there is a simple solution on how to solve humanity's addiction to plastic, and that is to hardly use the stuff at all. If you have the option, choose reusable metal, glass, or wood. Kind of like what they did before the plastic 
industry brainwashed us into thinking single-use plastic was a good idea. And don't fall for companies who use positive spin to try to get you to buy the plastic products. Sure, a recycled plastic jacket sounds great, but it's still a product that's supporting the continued use of plastic and feeding the beast of the recycling industry that wants us to continue using plastic. In short, the less plastic you use, whether recycled, new or otherwise, the less you'll be feeding this beast that seems to only care about profit. Plastic is used in almost every single industry these days and one of the biggest culprits right now is the fashion industry. We have microplastics floating around everywhere that is now being detected in human blood. The good news is that there seems to be really nice innovations coming in the future like plastics made from mushrooms and seaweed and hemp but until that becomes a viable alternative almost no plastic is good plastic and if somebody's trying to convince you otherwise generally speaking they're really only after one thing the cold hard plastic currency that lives in your wallet. Thank you so much for watching. I'd love for you to be here in the future, so subscribe for more. Also, just to let you know, we're in the final weeks of our 30% off pre-sale of our latest course, The Manual, where we teach you strategies in order to become more financially free using your existing skills and knowledge. So check that out, link in bio, and I will see you in the next one.